Hi, this is Dr. Vlakis from Minneapolis Civic Institute. It's a great pleasure to introduce Dr. Dimitri Karpaliotis from Columbia University. Dr. Karpaliotis is one of the best operators in the world, and he's going to show us an amazing case of um, undergrade and retrograde. Dimitri, thank you very much for doing the webcast. Well, it's always a great, uh, great pleasure to, to be with you, and uh, it's even a greater pleasure to discuss uh, this, I think, very interesting case because it illustrates uh, some of the difficulties that we face in everyday CTO PCI. We do have, uh, obviously, the hybrid algorithm that you uh, developed uh, among with other people many years ago, but uh, there are some situations that actually you need to deviate a little bit from the uh, algorithm in order to get a successful, efficient, and uh, safe case. So um, this is um, a case, now, by the way, you may notice that this is a biradial case over the last uh, five months at Columbia, we've uh, switched almost 100% uh, biradial. Uh, rare exceptions are cases post-bypass where we would use one femoral and, and one radial. So back to the case, this is a, a patient that had uh, was very symptomatic, inferior wall ischemia on two medications. Dual angiograms with an AL1 with side holes in the right coronary artery and an EBU35 on uh, the left. These are seven French, and we introduced them through the seven French slender sheaths, which are essentially now the diameter of six French. Uh, studying the angiogram, uh, this is a very ab ambiguous uh, proximal cap um, with bridging uh, collaterals, not much of a vessel length to work with uh, proximally. So the, here already we have some. Um, indicators of difficulty of the case, these cases. If you pay close attention by the motion of the vessel distal to the distal cap as compared to the proximal cap, it, it's very tortuous. It's a very tortuous uh, occluded um, segment and the length is uh, probably a little bit longer than 20. It's a, a little bit foreshortened here because of the uh, uh, tortuosity. So this is a JCTO3, I think, uh, case, which is a very uh, difficult uh, uh, case. Uh, this is uh, the shot to uh, understand the collaterals and their beautiful uh, septal uh, connections. Um, if you pay close attention, uh, the most promising uh, septals, which is the, this conglomerate of the first and second septal, are jailed by um, the previous stent, and that sometimes poses uh, some uh, difficulties. I will skip. Uh, this one. So we had, uh, so the, by, uh, by the algorithm, we have an ambiguous proximal cap, uh, good retrograde uh, options. Um, so this favors uh, a retrograde. And that uh, was our initial uh, strategy. But we start having some difficulties from the get go. It was very difficult uh, with conventional microcasters to guide a wire through the stent struts into the um, uh, collateral that, of choice. So we used uh, the Supercross 120 microcaster. It's an angulated microcaster made by uh, Vascular Solutions. And that's how we were able to point uh, towards um, uh, a gap between the stent struts and uh, get into the collateral. Subsequently, it was very easy to uh, advance a Corsair. At the bottom of the heart, uh, we had a little bit of trouble with surfing. So we did um, a distal uh, injection, which illustrates actually that they're not very easy collateral, they're corkscrew. However, with the Xion uh, wire, you see it here, real time, uh, we were able to cross uh, the distal third into um, the PDA, and we confirm it here with um, a contrast injection from the donor um, guide. So the, then it was very easy to advance uh, the microcatheter uh, close to the distal cap, but um, uh, despite my uh, efforts, I was not able to uh, create a dissection and I was not uh, happy with where the wires uh, were going. And my stiff wires, my confianzas, and my Gaia 3s were going into places that I was not very happy. So um, uh, I had to make a decision at this point, either to abort uh, uh, the case or figure out an alternative um, approach. And uh, what I decided to do is to convert from uh, untergrade, from retrograde to untergrade. Uh, and given the fact that there was an uh, um, ambiguous uh, proximal cap, I utilize what we call the move the cap uh, technique. So this is a very safe uh, way. I think it's the safest uh, way to clear proximal cap uh, ambiguity. The way it's done is you have two systems in the proximal part of the artery, one wire, and then you have an NC balloon sized appropriately to the size of the artery. You inflate it at relatively high atmosphere, 16, 18, and then you pin as you see in the circle, the microcatheter and the mid portion of, uh, of the balloon. Then that stabilizes the microcatheter and it pushes it towards the wall. 
uh, it works better in diseased uh, areas of the vessel, obviously. And then you take a pilot 200, you put a one millimeter 60 degree bend and you push and 99% of the time it will get into the subvertebral space. It will form a knuckle, as you see here. We obviously um, confirm in orthogonal uh, views. And then I decided to uh, advance a stingray uh, wire, which was uh, surprisingly easy to go despite the um, uh, tortuosity and the calcification, actually, I see here, of, um, of the vessel. Uh, so the, the stingray is just below the microcaster. So what we decided to do at this point was to use the um, distal microcaster for retrograde microcaster for injections. So you see here that we're exiting with a stingray wire. We're poking up towards the lumen, which is uh, opacified by uh, injection through the tip of the retrograde microcatheter. Then was a stick and swap. We decided to engage to wire the larger posterior lateral uh, branch. And uh, this is the, the final uh, result. It was a very calcified vessel, so probably GCT04. Actually, not three. We didn't count that in, in the beginning. You see that there's some residual stenosis. The area was adequate, was close to uh, five, uh, more than five uh, millimeter uh, square, uh, and it was eccentric. In the LAO, it wasn't uh, uh, that um, tight. We decided not to push our luck too much in this uh, heavily calcified um, and um, uh, tortuous uh, segment, especially knowing that we had uh, dissected, so had pushed the calcium probably uh, uh, against one part of the vessel. So to avoid the risk of a perforation, we accepted uh, this uh, this result and the patient was discharged in good condition. And it's now uh, six months we're still in follow-up and he's doing very well clinically. Great, thank you. That's a great case. A uh, couple of things, a couple of questions. One on the, on the move the cap. So in the original description, it was making the balloon first, making the dissection, then coming with the microcatheter and the wire. Here, it looks like you'd like to do it at the same time. Is that your current way of doing it? Yes, I think that this is a safer way to do it. Uh, uh, what you're talking to is the initial uh, um, technique that we were using, either with uh, assisted by balloon dissection or even without. Sometimes what we would do was like the scratch and go technique. We would take a Confianza Pro 12 and then we would try to stab towards a heavily diseased part of the vessel and then flip it parallel uh, and then follow with a, with a microcaster. This is a very high end technique because you need to have absolute control of the tip of the um, wire and the microcatheter, but also it's not without risks because you can have perforations. Uh, with this technique, I think that the risk of a perforation is minimal. Uh, the technical skill that is required to do it is much simpler than the initially described scratch and go. So this is my default uh, move the cap uh, technique at this uh, point. Another point, I think I like your point about the calcification. We had some perforations in the past when you go very aggressive in those calcified vessels, especially so minimal. So it looks like for those, you just accept the less perfect angiographic result just to minimize the risk of complications, right? Absolutely. And um, I think, you know, the enemy of good is, uh, is better. And uh, if you have adequate uh, uh, MLA, MSA by, by IVOS, I think people should resist the temptation of going for a perfect result. Actually, in these situations, it's very difficult to dilate it because essentially if you have pushed the calcium towards one side, essentially you're just dilating the adventitia and it recoils. So you have a risk of perforation by pushing a speckle of calcium outside the vessel without really accomplishing much by, by going uh, higher uh, pressures. Uh, we actually have um, a paper uh, that is going to uh, be published in the May's issue of Jack CI where we did the analysis of 225 consecutive um, patients so that had uh, IVUS pre and post. And it's one of the interesting findings is that um, if you have by IVUS evidence of perivascular hematoma or VI vascular uh, injury, um, this is uh, uh, a risk factor for perforation. And actually, if this is detected by IVUS, it should make people even more conservative with their post uh, dilatations. Great. Thanks again for a wonderful case. And uh, we look forward to more exciting cases from you. Thank you. Thank you, Manos.